I do for you today? Um, my name's Jill, and I just got these diamonds. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm Jack, um, and uh, we've got some goods you want to uh, buy. No, I just want you to look at all this stuff. Oh, no, 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 so no, no, much no. of it. And so you've got a lot of it. Don't bring it out here. Let's go to the back room, to the lab there, and have a look at it there. You might want one of these after your bicycle ride. Oh, thank uh, you. One away there. Follow me. I love the messages in Barchi. You know, I got all of these diamonds actually in Dubai last week. How much are they worth? Well, that depends on whether they're natural or synthetic diamonds. Like, as in a CZ or something? No, that's an imitation diamond. I'm referring to a non-natural diamond. Oh yeah, I read... Non-naturally grown diamond. I read something somewhere. Was it a CBD diamond? CBD, ah yes. Let me tell you about those. What's one of the methods of growing diamonds? Let me show you. There's, what you have there is a reaction chamber, often made of glass, is evacuated and filled with a stream of methane and hydrogen. The methane is ionized in the plasma that is generated by microwaves and the carbon in the methane deposits onto a seed crystal diamond plate. Over a period of days, the diamond plate thickens. So what's the hydrogen for? The hydrogen etches away the graphite that tends to be formed because the pressure inside the chamber is below that for which diamond is stable. To grow diamonds in the diamond stable temperature and pressure regime, high pressure and high temperature, also known as HPHT, are needed. This is the method which I'll briefly describe to you now. The heart of HPHT growth is a reaction cell in which a seed crystal is surrounded by a metal and near the top of the cell is a carbon source, usually diamond powder. At a temperature of about 14,000 degrees, whoops, I mean 1400 degrees, the metal, which is nickel, iron or cobalt, becomes molten and dissolves the diamond powder. With a temperature gradient, the dissolved carbon then precipitates onto the seed crystal and it grows. The pressure is achieved by several methods. One method comprises a belt that has opposing anvils pressing against the cell that is constrained within a donut ring. Another method uses six opposing anvils, though the most popular one for production purposes is a split sphere method pioneered in Russia. It has a small footprint, so many of the units can be installed on a factory floor. Okay, I see. Well, really, that's great and pretty technical, but how are you actually going to identify these synthetics or whatever you call them? What toys do you have over here? Ah, let me show you what we have. And they're not toys, they're instruments, by the way, Jill. Well, here they are. The multitude from the small to the large. We have a magnet, a cross-polarised filter, also known as a polariscope, a system for looking at the fluorescence and phosphorescence of a stone, and our latest piece of equipment, a spectrometer for looking at the absorption and the photoluminescent spectra of a stone. And one of the oldest pieces of equipment, or still of use to gemologists, a loop and a microscope for looking at the inclusions in a diamond. So what's this thing for? Ah, yes, that's a prototype. It's also known as a doublet buster but we don't need that. All right, right, well, let's just get it going, hey? Well, what have you got there? Show me what you've got. Oh, gosh. I've got lots. I um, got these from a guy last oh. weekend. He's well, there's quite a bit here. What we'll do is I see you've got coloured stuck diamonds as well. We'll leave those to later because... Oh, so they're definitely the diamonds? I'll assume that they are. But I'll look at the colourless ones first. And see. Hey. Oh, sorry. Uh, he just gave it to me on the weekend and I've been wearing it ever since. He said I could sell everything. I'm just really after some cash. So what tests are you going to start with? We'll start with the fluorescence. That's the easiest test to use which we have two wavelengths, a long wavelength and a short wavelength, also called LW and SW. Okay, we place the diamonds 
into a, a viewing area here. So do they always fluoresce blue? Uh, most of the naturals will fluoresce blue, but they can come in a range of colors, depending on the inclusions in them, the defects, and also the color of the diamond. As this chart shows, and also it depends whether they're synthetic, whether they're treated, or whether they're imitation, the C's edge you referred to earlier. I'll use my phone so you can see what's happening inside under this, but normally you can look through the eyepiece and uh, there's an app here which helps in viewing what we're looking at. So there's a short, a long wavelength and you can see there's the diamonds. Oh, they're glowing. They're all different strengths, aren't they? And they're a bit dusty as well. But the key here is to compare the long wave and the short wave reaction. So I can photograph the uh, long wave and then switch over to the short oh, wave. Oh, they So those ones almost have a bit of yellow. Well done indeed. And that's the sort of thing we're looking for. So I can take a picture of the short wave. And so then... those ones got fainter and those ones got stronger. Is that right? You're quite right. And we can confirm that with this uh, little comparison thing here. Which I can take it off now and you can see that some of them indeed are, are brighter in the long wave and dimmer in the short wave and they're the natural ones so this one here certainly is a natural stone and this one um, and looks like that one whereas these other ones here uh, are suspect synthetic diamonds these three at the top here. Will I still get lots of money for those ones? Well you won't get as much but I want to show you something else as well, which helps us uh, confirm the nature of the synthetic diamond. If I go back to what we were looking at, you might, oh, let's just go back one further. Uh, this is the short wavelength fluorescence, and you'll notice when I switch it off, two of them. Oh my gosh, you can see it glowing. That's what is known as phosphorescence. And you and, didn't even need to take the, turn the lights off in here. Well, that's the beauty of this system. That, that the older ones, they needed that. Now those ones that phosphorus are HPHT because by virtue of some of the inclusions that are in there. <laughs> okay, now we'll look at the melee. What's melee? Is that another type of synthetic diamond? Uh, no, it uh, relates to the size of the diamond. So small ones, usually a couple of millimeters in diameter. Mm. But the thing about the melees, if they're synthetic, they'll only be HPHT on the whole. Well, 99% of them will be HPHT because it's too, it's uneconomic to make them by CBD methods. So since we're only looking for the, whether HPHT or not, it's phosphorescence, which is the, that the afterglow. technique. The afterglow indeed. So um, I've got a bit of a tray here to help identify if any of them do glow. And uh, you might recall the uh, put it under the housing. So I've actually got a, a melee version of that particular software and uh, you can't really see the stones there but when I switch the UV off, ah. Oh wow, but that one's not glowing is it? They all seem to be glowing. If we go back to what we had before, as you can see all of them there, I could record the pictures and compare them but uh, it's, uh, oh, yeah, it is glowing. We can do the same comparison as before. And generally speaking, if someone's going to have synthetic diamonds in a parcel, there'll be unlikely to be one or two stones, but uh, either a, a large proportion. In this instance, they were all, all HPHT grown. Um, with the melee, because it's HPHT, the iron inclusions also mean that it might be magnetic. And we can test that with having a rare earth magnet, and, and if they are, oh look, there we have an example of, of one of the ones that have been picked up. Um, well, there's another one as well. So that's not a definitive test, but uh, it uh, helps confirm that they are 
synthetic. Can a natural HPX2 diamond now. have iron in it? It can, but they're very rare to find one that's that's magnetic. So, Jack, can you use the magnet on the bigger stones? It certainly can. Let's try it on those ones we looked at earlier. You might recall, I think, the ones at the top were... Oh, look, yes, certainly. That can one lifts it. And let's see if there, you can see if there are any more. Yes, I got one. 